Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Alon Peters, and I'm here to talk to you about how NFTs are the future of video games. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not doing that. Um, now, what I'm going to do today, pull out my little note stock, that actually I want to note that the first note that I have on this note stock is 1993 born. Just in case I forgot, I guess. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is exactly how I got to have my dream job, basically. If you don't know who I am, I work at Sony Santa Monica Studios as a video game writer. Um, I actually, right after doing this, have to go back to the hotel to start my work day because it will be Los Angeles time when I have to go back to work. Um, but I've been in the industry for about 10 years. I think 11, I don't know, who can count? And I've done a lot of stuff. I worked at IGN, I've worked for Rooster Teeth. Uh, I have a questionably successful YouTube channel. Kind of depends how you find that, and I do a whole bunch of stuff on like Twitch, and, and here I am. So um, I absolutely got my dream job right now, and I know a lot of people want to work in video games, and I feel like I really bulldozed my way into working in video games with a very specific strategy that I feel like was always going to work eventually, uh, because I really, like I said, bulldozed my way in. And I've seen other people who I know who I've spoken to about how I ended up where I am today follow the exact steps that I took and also end up in the industry. So my goal so is to basically good. teach you how I did what I did and where you can fit in the industry if that's a thing that you'll be interested in doing. And also talk about how great NFTs are. Again, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You cancel me for it, I wouldn't even do that. Okay. Dune 1993. I don't actually have anything to say other than that this is my favorite video game, this is the year that I was born. And also that uh, my intention is to remember the years I tend to tie them to video game releases. So I was like, well, I was born in 93, and this is the greatest game ever made. And the hottest take that I will have this whole time is that I think the first Doom is actually a puzzle game, and not an FPS. Can't see me for that later, too. Um, OK. This is Age of Empires, 1997. I'm pretty sure this is where I started playing video games. But I don't know because I was very young. That is also going to happen a number of times throughout this talk because, again, who remembers? I'm like trying to be vaguely accurate about when I did things, but I'm probably going to be wrong. Um, but Age of Empires is a really like cool place to start, and just how I got into video games basically is actually my mom. Um, it's happened less now, but when I first started working in games or, or I don't know, met people, I'd always get the question of like, oh, do you have a brother? Is that how you got into video? Do you have a brother that, that's got to be your dad plays games? It's actually my mom. So she got my sister and I into a bunch of educational games, and we started playing Age of Empires, my sister and I, as uh, demo discs that came in cereal boxes. I don't know if you have that in the US. Did you get demo discs? You did? Okay. So we only had, it was up to like Babylon, and <laughs> we played it just over and over and over and over again. Um, and, and it was like such a, just an amazing bonding experience that I had with my sister before my neighbor, her name was Carly, ended up getting like an N64 because she had money. <laughs> so my sister and I would just go over there all the time and then play her games and then eventually got a Nintendo 64 second hand and then you know, went from there. So I played video games my whole life. And the point of that is to say basically the two passions that I always had in life are uh, writing and video games. And I feel like that really led me to where I am today. And I assume everybody in this room has the video game part down. If you hate video games, raise your hand. None of you, all right. <laughs> Let's do it. So you will have another passion, and that's what I'm going to get to next. Um, not a video game, but I really feel like Pokemon shaped a lot of what I have done. Uh, this is a still from the Pokemon movie that came out December 17, 1999 in Australia, where you got the Mew card. I still have mine, I'm very proud of it. Um, and I remember crying in the cinema as a child at seven years old, watching two Pikachus just slap the shit out of each other. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been like, you know, this content can be really emotional. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I also really think that Pokemon kind of did a number on a bunch of kids in a way that we <laughs> just don't really address. The fact that the company slogan of, I think, the biggest IP in the world is gotta catch them all. It's not like, do good and win. Well, be good to people. It's obtain everything, you sad shit. <laughs> and I never have. And I think I still feel guilt for that. At no point have I ever filled out a Pokedex 
Um, and, and since I was seven years old, apparently, I've been told, if you don't do this, you fucking suck, rather than, like, <laughs> make friends and be nice to people. And I'm sure, again, that has affected a bunch of us in ways that hopefully someone much smarter than me will dive into one day. So um, but yeah, this is also around the time that I started writing, when I was around seven. I wrote, I think I started writing um, dreams, any dreams that I had, I started writing down. And I was writing short stories and books, they're all terrible, um, I think. I may have invented persona at one point, I wrote this story that was about how kids, while they were asleep, were affecting things that were happening in the real world. And one of these subplots that I had was about a teacher who really sucked. I was like, that happened in Persona 5. I need to sue Atlas for that. <laughs> uh, there were, I have those, those particular short stories still, and they're very funny to read because, you know, seven-year-old can't really write. They're all so literal. It's like, and she was mad, full stop. It's very cute, though. Um, so it's something that I've always done. Um, and continue to do, and I, I fully credit my parents for like, you know, really helping me develop that passion and continue with it. So then, 2005, Video Shadow of Colossus, which is blurry. a beautiful video game that I think also kind of, outside of probably offering up time, which changed my life, I think made me think about the emotional context of video games in a very different way and, and, and consider it uh, in terms of player agency, which is very different from any kind of writing I have done until this point. The, everything I'm going to say right now is going to sound like bragging, but um, I assure you that it is extremely relevant to every point that I'm going to make. So 2005 was when I guess we realized that I was good at writing. Um, I was doing extension English, which meant that I was several grades above everyone else my age in terms of uh, writing curriculum. I went to a summer camp for gifted writer kids, um, and it's something that I just became very, very, very obsessed with. Um, and the point of telling you that is that everyone in this room has one of those things. It's not like you're necessarily in extension English, but people come up to me all the time and say, I want to get into video game writing, or I want to be a game reviewer. And I think that they say that not because they have a passion for writing, which is a very important part, but because they think that reviewing games sounds like a sick job, <laughs> which it does. Mm. But you're not going to succeed in the industry unless you have the skill set that also applies to that position, basically. And I think that that becomes a really frustrating thing for a lot of people trying to enter the industry is you're trying to figure out how to force the industry to take you in a job rather than figuring out how to force it the other way around. I don't know if that sentence made sense, but my point is my two passions are always writing and making games. And I was like, I can put these two things together. And that's what I've done. Most people who come up to me say, I want to be a game reviewer. I also take submissions because I um, mentor writers every year. And I would say 90% of the writing submissions that I get are from people who are not writers or do not have interest in writing, and it's very clear. So then they get frustrated that they can't get a job in the industry because they're not actually thinking of the thing that they can do and the million jobs that the industry has that they can fit that into. So you have the video game part, have that down, what is the skill that you have that actually goes into the games industry? Because there are so many jobs and so many different facets that aren't just writing, which everyone thinks is the thing that they want to do without skill set. You're an artist. We have the coolest artists ever. Seeing the artists, the stuff that they make at Santa Monica Studio, every time that I see new art, I'm just like, my mind is blown. Engineers, people who work in marketing, there are a lot of accountants at IGN. Like every job that you can think of, there is, uh, or skill set that you can think of, there is a place that you belong in the games industry. And I think just making sure that you pair those two things and figuring out where they fit is going to benefit you a lot more than, no, I want to review video games. People should hear my opinions. <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. And I, I, yeah, I just really want to iterate that as the most common mistake people make. Why they fail to get in the industry is they aren't taking advantage of the things that they are actually very, very good at that the industry would welcome them for and are instead trying to invent the most fun sounding job. And also reviewing games sucks. It sucks. Uh, I know it sounds fun, but when you have to finish Elden Ring in two weeks um, and you're just sitting there sweaty, haven't showered in days, definitely not speaking for myself, uh, it's, it's, it makes you hate any game. Like, there's so many games that I've been really excited about when I was a reviewer. 
Uh, Docsitis 2 is one that stands out for me really strongly, but I was super excited to play, and then I finished it in three days, and I was like, wow, that 